just getting everything set up and organized. <clears throat> I had cleared off this table uh, earlier in the week and everything was kind of displaced. So just trying to get everything organized. So today um, we're going to kind of make up a scene as we go along. I'm taking the medium hake brush, saturating my paper with it. And while it does that, I'll set up my palette. So this is a 15 by 11 quarter sheet of Stonehenge Aqua, 100% <clears throat> cotton. It's kind of my go-to paper. The medium hate brush. I'm just getting everything wet. I don't think I'm going to dip out of the usual palette that I use. I'll kind of get everything a little bit clean. And then we'll come up with a plan with what we want to paint for today. Last time I was painting, I took a big glo uh, glob of <clears throat> burnt, sien uh, burnt umber on the brush. And you can see I globbed it right there in the middle. It was just uh, straight from the tube. So we're going to look at. I've been playing with the, the Venetian red. That's what I mainly use. I kind of interchange it with light red. And it's just more of an opaque, rust tone paint. And a little bit more lizard and crimson. I'm going to have to pull another tube out soon. I think I have another tube of this. This is a paint that I really don't use that often, but. I've been mixing it with um, the raw sienna sum and playing around with uh, the results from that. A little bit of ultramarine. And we'll wet our other paints on the palette. Now, Like I said, don't really have much of mine. We'll kind of come up with a plan. Um, just throw a little bit more water on there. I was thinking about experimenting with uh, splattering into this wet and wet. So we might do that. Right now I'm just letting that buckled paper sit down flat. And then we'll see how we're looking on the camera. Looking good. I'm not liking that little shadow right there. Sorry about that. <clears throat> I'll get everything adjusted as time goes by. All right. So let's start things off with a little bit of the Elizabeth Crimson U. I think. I want to do a high horizon line. And we'll bring a little bit down here. Let's get some raw sienna on here. Bring it down. So I'm just blocking in some ideas. Ultramarine. Help the paper relax a little bit more. Let me mix a little 
burnt sienna, uh, burnt umber with that ultramarine, make it kind of gray. Put a little bit of clouds in. Lizard and crimson. Payne's gray. Okay. So, just kind of got a grayish mixture here. Um, I'm going to use that Venetian red, light red with ultramarine, get more of a purple, put a horizon line in. Now, here I need to decide what I want to do compositionally. Right now I'm just kind of putting a line in. that okay I think I got an idea I'm gonna put some of these shapes in I'm gonna leave openings and then I think I want to come back when it's dry and I'm gonna do a little light wash in those area for either further background distance so that is the idea I'm just going to work my way down the page and make this composition, but <clears throat> I'll do that there. Um, let's make this an opening for water right in there. See how all this water pulled down here. <laughs> I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna keep this, let's keep this purple on it right now. I'm going to have to pinch this up. So if the water is going to be here, I have to make sure we get some sort of correct perspective with the sizes. Do that. That. This will be reflection. This will have to give more substance to make it land. This will have to be darker reflections. So that's what we're looking at. Okay. So I kind of have my composition in mind now. And whenever you're doing wet and wet, you want to increase the concentration of the paint. If you apply back into it so you don't get back runs and whatnot.
just trying to put in the idea of um, trees and shapes. This would be the shadow coming down, the reflection. some burnt sienna on there. Relax the buckling. Let's see. Grab the rigger. Mainly just going to mix darks with the um, ultramarine and the burnt umber. Let's see. This is going to be the line for the land right here. So we got the S-shape composition going. All right, so let's get some burnt sienna up front. I think I had said that I wanted to try splattering into the wet Let's just see what happens when that happens. So we'll see if that adds interesting textural effects. That's kind of the big experiment for this painting. I haven't really washed any brushes in this painting either. So in a bit I'm going to do a dry off, but let me Let's do some interesting little lifts and see what happens with that. Okay, so let's do a dry off. If you have headphones on, cover your ears. And let me stretch this.
It might scrape a little bit while it dries. Really no rhyme or reason with my scraping right now. This is just for uh, spontaneity. Usually when I'm drying, I'm usually mixing a color or something like that. So I'm usually doing something with the other hand. Some areas are still damp, but yeah, we'll just do a little few rock marks. You won't get overboard. It's too dry right there. All right. So I just got that mixture with the ultramarine, just a pretty wet wash of it. I'm just going to put this in that far background. That's something I had mentioned in the very beginning that I wanted to do that. I just wanted to and make a few little bit darker colors in there. Okay. Now let's get back to our hake. Oh, not the hake I was using. That's a large hake. I was doing a painting for the back of the um bearded dragon's cage the other day so I was doing a um, really big painting so I can mix a brown and I can get a kind of purple going get some more red ultramarine Some yellow. I really don't use lemon yellow that often. In my oil palette, I really don't use yellow unless I'm using a palette based around purple and yellow. some ultramarine in there, darken that spot. Scrape some textures. Give them a lot out. Come to this other side.
paints gray. I'll squirt. Scrape into the trees just like before. Sporadic and random. I could just take this brush and Take the razor, grab some raw sienna, Take a light wash. Add something back in there. Let's <clears throat> get some lemon yellow in here for some patches of green. Now, Try to get that overgrown feeling of it hooking over. I'm scratching it to give that feel of that grass. Spray. Here's the bend of the brook. I'm just kind of shaping things, to be honest. Let's uh, let's mix it dark. Let's get 
some ultramarine blue. So I'm trying to go very strong pigment right here. So I'm scraping it with the flat side. Then I'm gonna dab. Get some raw sienna on there. I'm gonna kind of push back and forth. That's all I'm happy with the way it's looking. And what I mean by push back and forth is scrape, put paint in, scrape, put paint in or dab until I feel it looks good. It's going to have growth around it. So I really need to darken these to separate them from the background. coming off the paint's gray Take the razor. That white should help it pop. going for texture just taking the flat Oop. nice that's kind of a rough break I had done on this and gave me a good texture right there I do have to give a little bit of foliage around this. I might just leave it 
as minimalistic as that. Some branches coming off of it, make it all a little wild. Now, oh, I already started touching the paper. There we go. So we're going to do it. Now, with this, I'm just mixing a dark. I feel like I need to make this guy a little bit wider so I can, so he's not battling the other one. This is a fun one. Kind of just going sporadic. That I know I'd have some undergrowth down here. Stand up, take a look. Razor blade, pick out a little bit of whites, flowers, I could do a sideways cut with a slight pull towards me. So we're pretty much almost done. We're pretty much done. A little bit of, see if we get a little bit darker in some areas to pop forward.
at this point it's kind of tickling the painting adding a little bit of detail that probably isn't necessary it's just for fun so let's try it off we'll sign it we'll put a mat and see A little bit of texture right there, a little too flat. Signature. All right. Clips off. Here's that big old mat. Adjust this so you all can see the full screen. Exor excuse the mess on the floor. All right, and there you go. All right, I hope you enjoyed. Feel free to follow along. Feel free to like, subscribe, etc. And have a great day.